Good morning and happy Sabbath. What a privilege we have to connect with you again in this Sabbath morning for our online Sabbath school. We're so happy that you are following us in this Sabbath. Pray and hope that you had an amazing week. We are excited because we are actually starting a new Sabbath school lesson. It's not amazing that we are starting a new Sabbath school lesson, right? We are in lesson number one today, the war behind all war. So what a blessing that this quarter, we have a brand new quarter to study that talks about the great controversy. And friends, what a privilege we have that in the next three months, we're going to talk about the great controversy between God and evil, between good and evil, between God and the enemy, which is Satan. You cannot lose this uh, message or these lessons because they are amazing. And what a time in history for us to study when we see so many things happening around the world. So we welcome you to our online Sabbath school. We are so happy that you are joining us. You may join us from close by. You may join us from far. So in the chat of YouTube or Facebook, if you are so kind, you can just let us know from where you are watching us. We want to keep praying for you and your family. And you know what? Maybe we can connect and we even can visit with you and pray with you. If you are a guest visiting with us, we welcome you. I'm Pastor Fernando Leite from the, the Mountain View Central Seventh-day Adventist Church. And we are so happy that you are here with us live. I'm not alone. I have someone with me. We have Kerry with us. So, Kerry, welcome. It's good that you are here with us. Kerry, how are you? Thank you. Thank you, for Pastor Led, for having me um, join this Sabbath School lesson. And I'm so glad I'm here. And um, I am delighted that we have this new quarter study that we're going to study today. Amen. Thank, Amen. You. Thank you again. Kerry is one of our panel, the Sabbath School online panel. So once again, thank you for being with us, Kerry. Uh, always available to share with us. And we are so excited that we can be together this Sabbath morning to share God's lesson of course, we cannot share all the lesson. We're going to have some highlights. You also study. So we're just going to share some highlights of this amazing, amazing story. Before we jump in, I will have a moment of prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for another Sabbath that you are giving us. Thank you for the lesson. What an amazing lesson we have for this quarter, the great controversy. Today we talk about the war behind all wars. And Lord, we know that you already have a solution for all this problem of sin. And soon, very soon, we're going to see the end of all long battle between you and Satan. So, Lord, thank you because you are in the winning side and you want us to be in the winning side also. And we pray that today, as we share, your spirit can be with us. Bless me and Carrie. Bless everyone that right now is connected with us, that you will connect later, watch later, that your spirit will touch everyone with your word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Again, amen. friends, we are in lesson number one, uh, talking about war behind all wars. Right now, there is wars, you know, especially uh, in Ukraine and Russia. It's been too long. It's been too long. It's difficult to watch. We have a war between Israel and Gaza. You know, it seems that whatever you see is war after war after war. Small, small level, big level, but we always have these wars. So today... We're going to study the war behind all wars. Why there is war, there was a war behind. That is the initiation of all things that happen. So again, we are in lesson one. You can have your lesson in your Bible. We are ready to study. We're going to read from the lesson. We're going to read from the Bible. Some things we have here in our PowerPoint, you can follow here with us. Uh, but otherwise, you just pick up your lesson, pick up your Bible, and we go to this journey. We go to the lesson of Sabbath. And on Sabbath, we have the memory text that comes from Revelation 12, 7 and 8 and says the following. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. We start talking about war. And the, the text, the memory text, Carrie, talks about a war that broke out in heaven. Any highlights, any thoughts in this memory text? 
Yes, certainly. So there's a war that's been happening. And this is a war, as we know, that's a war from Michael and the good angels, which is what we consider the good angels. And of mm -hmm. course, the dragon, as sometimes we refer to the, the devil or, or the serpent or, or, or Satan and the bad angels. And there's the war going on that eventually they were kicked out in heaven. Yes, that's amazing, right? Because sometimes we have no clue what's happening in heaven, but uh, it seems that there was not just war here, but in some point in, in, in time, there was a war that broke in heaven. So we are talking about the war behind all wars. So it seems that today we're going to focus in this war in heaven, right? To understand why happened, what's going on, what happened out there, right? So there was a war that broke out in heaven and angels fought angels, right? And we also know because we read the lesson that the angels that lost this war were thrown down to the earth, right? There is a statement in the lesson of Sabbath that is very interesting that says, God's purpose, as God deals with the great controversy, right? The purpose of God in the great controversy is to demonstrate to the entire or before the entire universe that he always acts in the best interest of his creatures. So this is very interesting because in this war, in this great controversy, it seems that Satan gives an accusation to God that God is not good. But the statement says that God's purpose is to make sure that the people can see, when I say the people, I see the universe, right? The creation can see that God always acts in the best interest of his creatures. Any thoughts on that, Kerry? Yes, um, sometimes we don't usually see God's intention, but that doesn't mean that his interest is not for the best of us. And that is evident through um, his interaction with the nature. And that's truly a blessing because sometimes there's a reason for everything we call that. And, and, and sometimes we just don't understand what's the end of the tunnel, but there's always what's best for us. God always is looking for the best of us. That's right. You know, sometimes the people and the, the lesson talks a little bit have some questions, right? You know, if God is good, why that is bad, right? How can a God of love allow so much evil to exist? Why do bad things happen to good people, right? Uh, so, you know, all these questions, sometimes the people have these questions regarding God. But it's very interesting because as we analyze the great controversy, we actually going to have an answer to this question. And this is why we can assure you already starting this lesson that the only purpose of this great controversy, God just have one purpose, is to demonstrate that God is a God of what? Love. And whatever God does, he does in love and in justice. At the end of the day, in the end of the solution of all these wars, nobody can say that God was not fair. Everyone will say that God was just. Because God is just. And whatever he does, he does in the best interest of his creatures. God is a God of love. Even in the mm -hmm. tough times. God never stops showing his love for humanity. All right. So this is kind of the introduction. And then we move to the lesson of Sunday that now we go more in depth to this war that happened in heaven. Right. We have the same context, which is the same verse of Revelation 12, 7, 8 and 9. I'm going to read verse 9 because we already read chapter 7, the war broke in heaven, Michael and his angels fight. Um, the dragon and the angels are in a fight. And verse 9 says, And the great dragon was thrown down, the serpent of old, who is called the devil and Satan. So that identifies who is the dragon. It's Satan. Who deceives the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. So there is a statement in the lesson of Monday, or Sunday, sorry, that says, Sin originated with Lucifer in heaven itself. There is no logical explanation why this perfect angel should have allowed pride and jealousy to take root in his heart and grow into rebellion against his creator. We're talking about the war in heaven. And now the lesson is telling us that the origin of sin actually was with this Lucifer, the old serpent, Satan. 
Any thoughts on this lesson on 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 Sunday, Kerry? Yes. So um, my take on this one is that this, this is how God's role His kingdom. So His kingdom with the we are given a choice of freedom. So that's why there is a free will, and because of His love, that's why He's given it to us. Because otherwise, we we are as the, according to the lesson that we lose the ability to love if there's no freedom of choice. So that's, that's right. exactly just to debunk what the, what Satan is saying, that God is not just, but this is a way of showing that God is just. He gives us the freedom of choice. That's right. And you know, that's so important because, you know, we can say, and the lesson talks about a little bit about that, is God did not create evil or an evil angel, right? The Bible actually says that Satan was 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 a perfect angel. Uh, you know, Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 12 says the following. <coughs> then says the Lord God, you had the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Verse 13, you were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The ruby, the topaz and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx and the jasper, the lapis lazuli the turquoise and the emerald, and the gold and workmanship of your settings and sockets was in you. On the day that you were created, they were prepared. You were the anointed Kiruv who covers, and I place you there. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walk in the midst of stones of fire. You were blameless in your ways, formed the day you were created until unrighteousness was found in you. We also could see Isaiah 14 also shares the same idea. But the idea here is God created Lucifer as a perfect angel. Perfect. Look at the description in the, in the garden of God with all these precious stones. So it was perfect until the day that what? Unrighteousness was found in you. Sin originated with Lucifer. And from that, escalate to a war where now the angels are fighting and he convinced one portion of the angels for his side against God, right? We cannot explain the origin of sin. We can say that was originated in a, in a being created by God named Lucifer, an angel, right? Um, why this angel should allow pride and jealousy to take root in his heart and grow into rebellion against his creator? There is no logical explanation. So we cannot sit here and try to explain why there is sin, because we'll not find our answer. So what we need to focus is that this is real, this is happening, and we need to understand what God did to solve this problem, because we already see that there is war in heaven. This sin that originates in the heart of this angel creates rebellion and confusion. And as you mentioned, God created us with the freedom of choice. Satan chose to go this path, as the same way Adam and Eve chose to disobey. God is not worried about that. God is more worried about solving the issues and the problems that can arise. Any other comments, uh, Kerry, in this lesson before we go to the lesson of Monday? Yeah, um, we're just so thankful that despite um, our choices, there's always something that we can lean on and go to. Because despite sometimes not, we commit some mistakes or some choices that we thought is right at the moment, but knowing God is there to guide us along the way, that is reassuring. Amen. And you know, the lesson, we don't have time, you know, for those that are following us, you look at your lesson. We don't have time because lesson is so good. We just can talk, touch some points. But there is an amazing quote from Ellen White in the end of the lesson of um, Sunday uh, that I feel that you must read. I will just mention a little bit if you are with your, you can read with me. It's a powerful statement in the book, The Great Controversy, in page 9494. It says, the heavenly councils pleaded with Lucifer. The Son of God presented before him the greatness, the goodness and the justice of the Creator, and the sacred unchanging nature of his law. God himself established the order of heaven, and in departing from it, Lucifer will dishonor his Maker and bring ruin upon himself. 
but the warning given in infinite love and mercy only aroused a spirit of a resistance. In other words, there was a time where God pleaded with Lucifer for him to change, but it seems that he didn't took it. He just created more what resistance to a point to erupt, erupt this war that actually he and his angels need to leave heaven because heaven is a place of harmony and peace. So here we can see that this sin is something crazy because where there is sin, there is no order, there is not harmony, there is no peace. And God, wherever he abides, he needs to be a place of peace. The same way here, although we are sinners, but God's desire for our life is that we live in harmony and in peace with him and with man. All right, let's move forward to the lesson of Monday. Lesson of Monday, here we go. Lucifer comes down, right? Rebellion in heaven comes down. Lucifer deceives, but Christ prevails. Powerful statement, right? Lucifer deceives, but Christ prevails. Revelation 12, 4 says the following. And his tail swept away a third the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she gave birth, he might devour her child. So we see now that we go from heaven to earth, and now Lucifer is a deceiver. His job is to not allow human beings to know God completely, but have a false image about God, right? There is a statement that says, Satan's pride ripen into open rebellion. He ac accused God of being unjust and unfair. He infected the angels with his doubts and accusations. Any thoughts, Kerry? Yes, Pastor. So the that is Satan's purpose is to create confusion. So it seems like even nowadays, it's, there seems there are choices that seems right to us, but in the eyes of God, is not. So he's trying to deceive even the elite. So we have to be careful of what we're trying to to go for. And the only assurance that we get is through the word in the Bible, the 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 word of God, and that's we know for sure that we are rooted with what is the truth. So we will not be deceived. Exactly. You know, again, we go to the same concept that, you know, we cannot explain this, but we need to be aware of this. We need to be aware that Satan deceive one third of the angels. You know, the same way, angels have freedom of choice, right? The angel school have to take a choice in heaven to stay in Satan's side or to stay in what? In God's side. Um, you know, every angel had to decide for or against Christ, whom to follow, right? Um, whom to listen, right? So whom to give obedience. But we see that one third decided to stay with Satan. So imagine how the capacity of this angel for argumentation and reasoning, you know, Carrie, and brothers and sisters that are with us online, you know, these are angels, wise, created in heaven with the capacity to reason, right? They were created before humans. For them to choose Satan, imagine the argumentation of Satan to convince them that God is wrong. So Satan is a deceiver. It's not a joke. He's an artist on deceiving. He's someone with a capacity to convince you. In other words, he's an amazing salesman. He can sell something that doesn't exist, right? In my country, you can say that you are a good salesman when you can send refrigerators in North Pole. When you can send sell fridges in the North Pole, you are an amazing salesman, <laughs> right? But you see, Friends, we are dealing with someone powerful. But again, no worries, because when God creates us, He creates us with the same capacity to reason. We are not created like the animals. The animals have an instinct. No, 
we are created to God's image, right? Not just physically, but also emotionally, intellectually. So we have the same ability to, to choose, to see God and to see what is right and wrong. Adam and Eve, they had a choice to obey or not obey. But in this process, who intervenes in the story? Lucifer, the snake, Satan, the deceiver, change the story. But again, we see that the story doesn't end with the deceiving of Satan. There is something else, which is God's solution for the problem of sin, which is Jesus Christ. This is why Christ prevails and Lucifer lose. But we need to understand that Lucifer is a deceiver and is a, a good one. He deceives the nations, he lies to the nations, and he doesn't allow people to know truth. Kerry, any, any last thought on the lesson on Monday as we move to the lesson on Tuesday? Yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering if, if Satan and his angels would have known the end game of this one. Would he still be going to Satan's side or Lucifer's side if they have known it, that they will, they, it will lead to distractions? Probably not at that time, because all they have is, is the power of how Satan manufactures the, the, the deceiving part of it. That they, it's like for them, it, they really believe it. And sometimes it's true to us nowadays. As I mentioned, that there are really some arguments that it's, it looks true because it's how the, the people around us, the society is accepting it, that becomes real and becomes correct. But in reality, it's not if we only follow what the Bible says. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I'm sure that, you know, when, when the councils of heaven try to convey with Lucifer I'm, I'm thinking, right? I'm, assure, I'm assuming that the other angels also had the opportunity to hear from God and, uh, and, and to hear from God, right? So God called their attention. God called to their reality. Um, I don't see a God that just strike without telling them what's going to happen. But uh, again, is their choice at the end of the day. After hearing God, after hearing God's, you know, if you think about the court, and you hear both sides, they still decide to go with Lucifer. <laughs> it's a choice. And the choice is a choice. Now, in the lesson on Tuesday, after war in heaven, now planet Earth becomes what? Evolved. One third of these angels were thrown to what? To the Earth, right? Um, we know that in Genesis 1.31, the end of creation says, God saw that all he had made and beyond it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. If you focus on this sixth day, it's exactly when God finished the creation and he finished creating Adam and Eve. And then on the seventh day, he rest. And as he finished creating Adam and Eve, the Bible says, and God saw, contemplation, God saw, that everything that he had made, it was very good. You know, sometimes as a father, a few days ago, right here in the studio where I am, uh, there is another desk the other side, and sometimes my son sits there doing his little things. And a few days ago, I was just sitting in a little sofa that is here, and he, he's like, he cannot see me that I'm looking at him. But I'm looking at my son that is 10 years old and I'm seeing him playing. Uh, the, the studio is dark and there is just a light in his desk. So I can see his face perfectly in the dark. He cannot see me. And I'm just looking at him, looking at my son and feeling so proud of my son, saying, wow, can't believe that I have a son. He's right here. He looks like us <laughs> and he's here, right? I, 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 was, I was so happy inside looking at my boy, seeing him playing his little toys. He was building something in Legos. You know, when God saw what he had created, everything was what? Good. Whatever God creates is perfect. God creates us. God didn't create sin. Satan allows sin to come in and to destroy. But God has power to change everything. And we're going to see his this also in the lesson. Now, there is a statement in the lesson that says the following. When Eve and later Adam 
made that choice, they open a door that God wants to keep forever closed. It was the doorway to sin, the doorway to suffering, heartache, sickness, and death. What a deep statement, Carrie. So, yes, Pastor, so the, the choice of Adam and Eve is, is, is doing at the time, it closes the door, it, it's, it alters the, uh, I would say, the natural order um, and the, between the relationship with humanity and God. So that's what God trying to prevent to happen, but it did. But the good part of it, that there's already a salvation ahead of us, that there's always a plan already that God, it, it, God has planned for us before it even happened. Yeah, you know, which is very interesting because when we focus in the Garden of Eden, you know, um, uh, they were created with the freedom of choice. And God right there creates the opportunity for the freedom of choice, right? Uh, he wants to make this freedom clear. He wants to test them, right? Uh, he planted a tree in the garden and called the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He made the point of telling Adam and Eve about it because he wanted to make sure they knew that they had what? A choice. You know, and you can eat from all the trees, but not this one. And boom, they're going to eat from that one. <laughs> it's their choice. God didn't force them, but they could not say we didn't knew about it. They knew about it. They knew exactly what that means. They knew exactly what happened in heaven. They were not blinded of what happened. Like us today, we know what happened in the war in heaven. A lot of people don't know that Satan is real, that there was a war in heaven, that there is a problem with sin with human beings, and there is death or salvation coming. But here they knew, right? And God wanted them to say, no, Satan, you can tempt us as much as you want. We are not going that way. Can you imagine, Karen? If Adam and Eve said no to Satan, sin will never enter in this planet. As most likely, other planets that God created, sin didn't enter there. But here, end up to enter. So they opened this door. And because of that, look what happened. Suffering, problems, sickness, death, rebellion, you name it. So this is why we are going through all this because a choice. Our first parents took a choice to obey Lucifer and not God. God says, don't eat. The day that you eat, you're going to die. Lucifer came and said, ah, that's not true. He just don't want you to leave. You see, there is two options here. And you are free to choose whatever you want. Unfortunately, they didn't choose well. Like us, many times, we don't choose well, we keep doing mistakes. It's a freedom of choice. But friends, God's desire was for them to keep that, that door closed forever. We did not, and God didn't stop there. Why? Because God never stops to fix the problems. Any final thought as we move to the lesson of Wednesday? That is a beautiful lesson. Right, um, let me just read this one, uh, Pastor. Sure. Um, as its very core, sin is rebellion against God. Sin separates us from God. Since God is the source of life, separation from God leads to death. It also leads to worry, anxiety, sickness, and disease. So in other words, all the calamities, all the sickness that's going on right now, is coming from our own choices. That's right. It's so, so true, right? Right, so it's coming from our choices. So, so sometimes we say, okay, well, I will make a better choice next time. But again, yet and again, over and over again, we still fall into the same mistake. That's right. But the good news is that the Lord is there always to lift us up. Amen. And this is why the lesson of Wednesday is very important because the first lesson is acknowledged that was a problem. Start in heaven, came to earth. We were disobedient. Sin came to humanity, but God had a solution. Genesis 3.15, capital verse key verse, messianic, messianic prom promise in the chapter 3 of the beginning of the Bible says, and I will put enmity, is God speaking, I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed 
under sieve. He shall bruise you in the head, and you shall bruise him on the heel. It's amazing that although sin entered in the world, but God, right there, right there, he made a statement and a commitment that is going to solve this problem. And we know through this prophecy, Genesis 3.15 is a messianic promise that Jesus will come and die to save us from our sins. The lesson says, do you ever wonder if God really loves you? Look at the cross. Look at the crown of thorns. Look at the nails in his hands and feet. With every drop of blood that Jesus shed on Calvary. God is saying, I love you. This is a deep statement. When you read this statement, Carrie, some thoughts that came to your mind, to your heart? Yes, uh, this statement tells me that God has the unconditional, sacrificial, unboundless love for us. So in other words, even if we don't chose him, he already chose us. So his love is already there to begin with. So all we need to do is just to accept and repent our, 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 with our, from our sins. Because God is there already loving us even if we are still yet sinners. So the, the dying on the cross, when Jesus died on the cross, this is his sacrificial love for us. That he himself, the, the father, allowed his son to die on the cross just for our sins. Powerful, right? And as you mentioned, this came to my mind, one of the texts in the lesson, in 2 Corinthians 5.21, that says this, He made him who knew no sin to be seen in our behalf, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Galatians 3.13 says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, from death, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. Hebrews 2.9 but we do not see him who was made for a little while lower than the angels, namely Jesus, because of the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for every one. Love finds a way because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have what? Eternal life. John 3.16. John 10.10. 10. I have come that you may have life and life more what? Abundantly, right? W what an amazing. John 14, 6, I am uh, the way, the truth, and the life. So Jesus is the solution. The second person of Trinity came down from heaven as a child, persecuted by dragon, right? And he came teaching us God's love and then he went to a cross to save us from the curse of the law. That's love. God didn't apologize. He didn't argue with us. He just solved the problem. Imagine if one of us have $25 million debt, something that you never, not even in your lifetime you can pay. And then suddenly comes Carrie, because Carrie has a lot of money. And Carrie, without saying anything, just goes and says, how much Fernando owns? 25 million? Okay, I'm going to take care of that. It is. He doesn't own you anything anymore. He doesn't ask permission. <laughs> then he just says, hey, I want you to know that uh, you're free. You don't own anything else. That's it. I'll say, what? Yeah, I pay that. It will be hard for me to believe, right? But if I believe, it's done. It's already done, right? There's nothing that they cannot do. Somebody did for me without ask. Now, if that happened, I would be very happy. We said, what? But how? What's going on? But what I did to you, what you did to me is like, how you do that? Oh, because I love you. Because I want you to be free. I want you to have a decent life. Don't worry about it. It's okay. Now, the point is, how this action from Carrie will impact my life. It will impact my life forever because I'm debt free and I'm free. And always I will be grateful to carry 
I don't need to pay him back. He doesn't want me to pay back. He just wants me to be free. And don't enter in debt again. <laughs> so friends, that's love. God didn't apologize. He didn't argue with us. He just paid the price of our penalty. That's it. That's love. He doesn't have to. It's not his problem. But he did anyhow to show us what love is all about. Because so, because God so loved the world that he gave. See, that suffer for God. He suffered. He actually had to give his son to save us. Jesus died and then raised. So it was not easy for God. God actually for almost 4,000 years didn't have the opportunity to connect with us face to face and touch by touch and, and, and touch us. He lost that. So God, sin brought suffering to God in somehow. So love finds his way. If we ever wonder if God loves us, look at the cross. Look at the gift that God is giving us to save us from sin, to save us from the deceitfulness of Satan. This is why Christ prevails. And this is now when we contemplate what God did for us. It will change our lives. It will really change our lives. Any final comment before we move forward? It, yes, Pastor. It's, it's just for me, it's very reassuring to know and find that that salvation is there already. God has died. Uh, Jesus Christ died on the cross. And all we do, need to do is just to believe in it. As you mentioned, you just have to believe when you just live in the house. That's all you can do, really. It's not something that you can buy, you can repay. But just knowing that it's there already, God had died for us for our sins. It's very reassuring to know that there is hope. There is hope. There is hope. Amen. And this is why the Bible has a great image for Jesus. He's the high priest. Very important person in, in the sanctuary, in the tabernacle, in the temple, the high priest. The function of the high priest. He's a mediator between God and man. He's the one that entered in the most only place. place. Very important position and a sense of a mediator between God and man. Hebrews 4, 15 and 16 says the following. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things as we were, yet without sin. Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. It's not amazing to know that Jesus is our high priest. And not just any high priest. He also was here. He understands the power of sin. He understands the power of Satan. He came to this world and he fights Satan one on one. But without sin. So Jesus is the real high priest. Because he's also our example. The high priests in the Bible, they are humans and also sinners. But Jesus Christ is the real thing. Someone that never seen, facing temptation to sin. That's powerful. This is why Hebrews 7.25 also says, Therefore, he is also able to save forever those who draw near to God through him. Since he always lives to make intercession to men. He lives to make intercession, but he also can save those that come to him because he's our savior. The lesson of a statement that says, Jesus wants more than anything else for us to be with him in heaven. In other words, Jesus wants to save us. The desire of his heart, the reason of his death and intersection, is to save us. Any light on Thursday lesson, Kerry? Yes, Pastor. So uh, we are we are His creation. So for sure, that's that's how He wanted us. We are His. Um, uh, he is our Maker. So if He makes stuff, He doesn't waste it away. He wants to be with us. So He wants to redeem us. The fact that we are fallen already because of sins. He wants to redeem us. And that's why there's a promise that only if we will believe that our life will not be perished. 
you know, it's so good to know, as you mentioned, if we believe, right? Uh, you know, God so loved the world that he gave his son that whoever believes shall not perish, but have eternal life. So we experience what is eternal life. You know, as we just mentioned here in the statement, look at God's desire to save us. And the lesson keeps saying something in the end of Thursday. There is a beautiful final statement that follows this statement that we put here. If you want to follow me, it says, do you have a special need in your life? Tell it to Jesus. Where there is sorrow, he brings comfort. Where there is fear, he brings peace. Where there is guilt, he brings forgiveness. Where there is weakness, he brings strength. That's amazing. Friends, that's powerful. We need to experience the power of our high priest. We need to experience this power of salvation. It's not just a statement or a thought. It's a reality. Jesus wants to save us. He wants to save us from our sorrows, from our fears, from our guilt, from our weaknesses. In other words, Jesus wants us to go over sin and live a different life. A life where His Spirit has power over us, where Satan starts going away from our lives, where we start have comfort in difficulties of time where we have peace no matter what happened to our lives, when there is forgiveness in our hearts. God wants us to understand and to experience His power because sin messed up everything. We discourage, we have pain, we messed up, we hurt each other, uh, we don't have strength. You see, we, we need God. Because God wants to restore us. And friends, in this great controversy, Satan wants to discourage us to don't trust God. Satan wants to take the power of God out of our lives. He wants us to don't trust God. He wants us to blame God like he did. But Jesus wants us to love God. He wants to show us how much God loves us. And he wants us to live a life of gratefulness and happiness and excitement for what God had done for us. Final thought on the lesson before we go to the lesson on Friday. Our time is going quickly. We just have a few minutes more. As, as you mentioned earlier, God, God uh, provides solution to everything. And he's not the, the one creating the trouble, but he provides solution. So whatever feeling that we have that we are feeling down, as you mentioned, God has solution to it. So we only, have, we only need to just believe and accept him and pray for him. And everything will go well if we will just follow his will. Absolutely. You know, there is a, a final quote in the lesson on Friday that says, it's from Ellen White, Great Controversy, page 500, 501. It says, in the banishment of Satan from heaven, God declared his justice and maintained the honor of his throne. Any thought? Any thought on this statement, Kerry? Yes, and my understanding from this is God will not um, tolerate any sin, any wrongdoings in front of him. So this is uh, in, in harmony of his being just and loving that he does not tolerate any of those things. And that is why... Um, he declares justice and then maintaining honor on his throne. Now, that, that's so powerful because, you know, God wants to solve the problem of sin. He tried to talk and make clear with Lucifer, giving him a choice to change, giving him time, because we don't know what time was, right? But there was time, time to solve the issue, time to consider and reconsider from Lucifer. He did not. So there is a limit, and that limit came to, a, to an end, and God says, well, we need to solve this. So if you don't understand my law, if you don't want to obey my law and be according to my law, you cannot be here. 
so you need to go. He doesn't want to go, they push him out. Why? Because God abides in a place of harmony. God abides in a place of peace. God cannot be in a place that there is no peace. And God, the same way that he creates harmony in heaven, is going to create harmony on earth. And soon, very soon, Jesus will come again. And that process will keep going. Those that will be saved will go with him to heaven for a thousand years. And after that thousand years, they will come down. Satan and all that will not be saved will rise and will try to fight the city. But then they will understand that they deny the correct one and they took the deceiver. And they will agree that it's just that they perish. And after that, finally, forever and ever, we're going to live in a place of harmony and peace. God, banishing Satan from heaven, declares his justice and maintains the honor of his throne. God is in his throne. God is the ruler and the creator of the universe. He loves his creatures. He gave time to Satan to reconsider. He gave time for him to change his mind, even when he was thrown to the earth. He had time for repentance until the cross. He did not. So God is giving time to everyone that come to this earth. 70, 80 years, whatever it is. God is giving time to all of us to make a choice. To follow him or not. And then at the end, that is the choice. If you want to follow him, you will keep going. If you don't, it's okay. You just will disappear. But God is just. Because he's giving time to everyone. But... He needs to keep going. He cannot always stay here. So there will be a time that this will come to an end. So friends, we know this story. I hope and pray that during this quarter, we'll appreciate more God for his love and his care. And we'll understand that our fight is not against humans, but our fight is against Satan and his angels that came out from heaven. So we cannot fight Satan. We need God to fight for us against Satan because he's a deceiver and he's powerful. But in Jesus' name, with the Holy Spirit, we can succeed. As the Bible mentioned, worship God, resist the enemy, and he will flee from you. So friends, as we come to a close of our lesson and prayer hope that you are blessed, keep studying these lessons that are amazing, amazing lessons. We are excited and uh, we are so happy that you are here with us. Pray and hope that you had a good time, that you are blessed and looking forward to see you again next week as we continue with our lesson we're going to be studying next week lesson number two which is the central issue love or selfishness that is lesson number two we're going to study this coming week the central issue love or selfishness looking forward to meet you again next week as we keep studying and before we go carrie can you uh, finalize with a prayer of course, and let's bow our heads. There, Lord, we come before you with hearts full of gratitude for the opportunity to study into your teaching. We pray that the wisdom gained today will manifest in our daily journey with Jesus, influencing on how we interact with others and, and to carry ourselves in, the pres in your presence. Instill a spirit of humility and reverence for you as our creator and savior we thank you lord for the ultimate sacrifice on the cross that offers us salvation from sin grant us the peace as we continue to worship you this sabbath as we enter into this time and rest and reflection we long for the peace and spiritual rejuvenation of the sabbath brings we pray in jesus name amen 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 carrie thank you so much for being with us and sharing it was a blessing. And also those that are with us and spend time with us, thank you so much for being with us. May God bless. And soon, around 11, we're going to start our worship service today, a special one, a communion service. If you want to participate, you can gather your bread and your wine, foot washing, and participate with us even online. See you soon. <laughs>